Coming up on Pet Heroes. An injured young horse is abandoned by his herd. His only hope for survival is an old mare with attitude. And a dog struggles valiantly to protect her puppies and an unexpected guest against the fierce winter cold. I'm Jason McCoy, and welcome to Pet Heroes. In animals, as in humans, a mother will often go to incredible lengths to ensure the safety of her offspring. But how do those maternal instincts extend beyond the bonds of family? Well, we look at two inspiring animals that redefine the meaning of the word mother. Bob Henderson lives just outside the town of Olds, Alberta. He's the president of the Wild Horses of Alberta Society. Our main purpose is to save and protect the wild horses that are, that are left here in Alberta. We, we have a management uh, strategy that we'd like to see put into place to assure that the horses are, are managed correctly and that they're there for all future generations. The number of wild horses in Western Canada has been in steady decline in recent years and it's now estimated that there are less than a thousand left. Paul Mitchell has worked to rehabilitate injured horses for over 40 years. Most of the wild horses now have been pushed off of the plains areas and they're back up into the high countries, not right into the mountains, but into the foothills along the Rockies. The wild horse is free. They are faster, they're stronger, they're healthier. Uh, where the domesticated horse, of course, being confined to smaller paces is susceptible to a lot of uh, diseases that uh, actually are quite common to man. They get them as well. The wild horses have a rich and distinct history. They were introduced by the First Nations people. When the Northwest Mounted Police arrived in Alberta in 1875, they documented thousands of wild horses roaming the prairies. They started abandoning their fancy eastern breeds and started using these Mustangs as mounts because they could go had so much more endurance and, and strength. They could subsist on the prairies where these other horses were having difficulties. Wiley is one of Bob's most cherished horses. He began his life as a wild horse before he came into Bob's life. Wiley is a typical uh, true wild horse. Very, very sure-footed out on the trails. Um, very aware of everything that's going on. But he has his own distinct personality. He, he's super friendly. He's very, very curious uh, of, of, of things, uh, but extremely reliable. You know, very, um, a very gentle uh, horse to be around. But when Bob first met Wiley in 2006, the young horse was in a dangerous situation and near death. That story begins with a phone call Bob receives from a woman in Bearbury, 60 kilometers west of his ranch near Olds. Yeah, I know where it is. I have received a phone call from a, a concerned lady about this injured wild horse. So um, acting on her directions, I drove uh, in a hurry just in my small vehicle out there to try to locate him and see what condition he was. Bob scans the woods for signs of the injured horse. After an extensive search, he spots him. It's immediately apparent that this animal is in bad shape. The first time when I, when I saw Wiley in here, and he was just nothing but skin and bones, and, and you know, and so limping and really hurting. You can tell an animal sick by their eyes, and you knew he was hurting really, really bad. Got within about 10 or 15 feet of him. That was the closest he would allow me to get. We figure he was hit by a, a large truck, and unfortunately, he was probably knocked right out of it. At that point, when he couldn't be revived, you know, uh, the wild horses have to keep moving. It's survival for them, and he was abandoned by his herd. As Bob gets closer to the young injured horse, he gets a good look at its beaten up rear flank. This doesn't bode well for its survival. Wiley was, uh, was hit in the rear hips and legs. He had uh, severe cuts and lacerations uh, on both, both sides, and 
uh, and down his legs. His left hip was swollen quite bad, and, and both his knees. Bob makes a move toward the horse, but being injured and frightened, it bolts. Unable to gain the horse's trust, Bob knows that there's nothing he can do alone. If he's going to save this young horse, he'll need help. With reluctance, I had to leave him that night, knowing I couldn't do any more. But I, I knew where he was, at least, now. The next day, Bob enlists the help of his only mare, Gypsy, a horse known for being difficult. She had an attitude. She was uh, a great, great, great horse, and, but she did have an attitude a lot of time. Surly demeanor or not, Gypsy is Bob's one and only shot at saving Wiley's life. If she can't guide the injured horse to the safety of the trailer, no one can. They reach the spot where Bob first spotted Wiley, but hours pass and he can't find the wounded animal anywhere. And when I couldn't find him right away, I got worried sick almost to my stomach thinking, wow, well, maybe the, the poor thing died or something else had happened to it. Being hit by a, a truck, he would have been scared to death, and he's heavily injured. So his main thing that would have been going through his mind, of course, would have been fear. He wouldn't have known what was going on. Now I'm in desperation, worried sick about him. Coming up on Pet Heroes, Bob and Gypsy are running out of time if they hope to find this injured horse alive. Bob Henderson and his horse Gypsy keep a sharp eye on the trees searching for Wiley, a badly injured young horse. They've been driving all morning and hope is fading that the animal is still alive. Dr. Connie Varnhagen teaches advanced courses on the bonds that form between humans and animals. She knows just how precarious this situation is. It's a really tough life for these Mustangs out there. Um, they have their strong herd structure, but for a young animal who's already injured to try and make it on their own, it's a very hard uphill battle for him. Finally, I caught a glimpse of him off to the side, you know, a couple hundred yards off the road, and I moved my truck clo as close as I could and uh, parked. Injured and alone, Wiley needs immediate help. So I got into position and I uh, took Gypsy out of my horse trailer. Bob hopes that with Gypsy's help, he'll be able to get this young horse to safety. But as he unloads his mare, he has no idea how these two horses will react to each other. I could see him in, in through the trees. Uh, tied up my mare, Gypsy, to a tree right in the middle of this small little meadow. Together, they wait for the wild young horse to approach, unsure of what will happen next. That's when he just came, and his little lips had just, just a flop, and he was so happy to see one of his own kind again. Gypsy, a horse known for being difficult, uncharacteristically accepts this injured young horse. To see another horse after being several days or a week or whatever the time frame was that this horse was separated, he probably thought he'd lucked out and was catching up with the herd again. Gypsy would know that he was hurt because she would pick up the scent. Being as um, how there is a built-in mothering instinct in a mare, she would have known something was up. So far, so good. But now, Bob and Gypsy have to get Wiley into the trailer so he can be delivered for medical attention. I took my panels out of my truck and made a little uh, corral behind my uh, trailer. Once the pen is complete, Bob carefully approaches the two horses in an effort to coax Wiley toward the trailer. But just when he thinks he's got it made, Wiley bolts. Wiley ran off again, and that scared me. I thought, oh no, he's going to take off. Bob waits and waits, but Wiley doesn't return. Disheartened, he leads Gypsy into the tiny corral, hoping beyond hope 
that the young horse will return. It's all up to Gypsy now. Gypsy, if she's a difficult mayor, what makes a mayor difficult for a human to handle are exactly those behaviors that are really important for the dominant mayor, the alpha mayor in the herd. She has this natural tendency to try and keep the herd together. And if her herd is suddenly wily, she's going to try and keep wily with her and entice him to come in and, and be protected. Bob and Gypsy anxiously wait for the young horse to reappear. Much to Bob's surprise, the horse returns, but still keeps his distance. So he went, finally went back into that pen, and I was able to run up and close the gate. Well, I don't think Bob could have captured him without Gypsy. Or if you're on foot, no. You're not going to get close. Gypsy was the key to the success of the rescue. It's hard to describe unless you know or love animals, you know, the elation that you get within in yourself of, uh, of seeing him uh, come up to the mayor and her accept him. She let him stand right there beside her the whole time, you know, which is a, a really fascinating thing to, to see, watch, and, and to believe in. Wiley is treated for his injuries and makes a full recovery. Thanks to Gypsy and Bob's efforts, he now has a permanent home on Bob's ranch. He's second in command of the, of the herd now. He's worked himself up to there. Uh, he doesn't take any guff if he doesn't want to. He has such a character and a, a lovable character. Although Gypsy is no longer with Bob, she'll always be remembered for her role in saving Wiley's life and helping him settle into his new home. I truly believe Gypsy was a hero that day. It was totally out of character for a horse like her to act the way she did, to be as calm and nurturing as she was the whole time she was interacting with Wiley out in the bush. In my mind, she's a hero. She truly, truly is a hero. It's amazing, you know, I still, <laughs> I still get a little bit of tears in my eyes over her, you know, that she did that for, and allowed me to have uh, the opportunity to work with this young horse here. Next on Pet Heroes, a dog battles the elements to ensure the safety of her young puppies and an unusual little visitor. We just saw how Gypsy, an old mare with some attitude, was able to provide the familiarity and comfort necessary to guide a frightened and injured young horse to safety. Next, we meet Esperanza, a special dog with an extra special family. Amber Gunderson lives with her husband and two daughters just outside of Edmonton, Alberta. The family has always had a soft spot for animals. Over the years, they've provided foster care to dozens of creatures in need. We live on an acreage, and we've had everything out here from cats and dogs to rabbits to anything we could pretty much take in and, and help. We're fostering three kittens right now that were uh, strays that were found in Edmonton. The family also has two pets of their own. Esperanza is the type of animal that you can tell that is just very giving. She is so kind, she greets everybody who comes here. What I love about Esperanza is her demeanor and her presence when you're with her, that she's just so sweet and kind. Jacob is really unique in the way that every time you touch him or pick him up, he instantly starts purring, which is something that we've always thought was really unique about him. Esperanza and Jacob first came into Amber's life the way most animals have, through foster care. Although they look carefree now, not long ago, they were facing a harrowing ordeal. Their story begins with Chris Gerwing. She runs For the Love of Dogs, an organization that looks out for the welfare of stray animals in rural areas. 
For Love of Dogs evolved by just seeing a need in a rural community that I was driving uh, through. And um, I've always loved dogs, and I've always been concerned with the welfare and their needs being met. Chris lives in Red Deer, Alberta, an hour and a half south of the city of Edmonton. A freezing winter day in 2010 finds her on the road, heading to a family function. It was December 5th, 2010. It was Sunday. I had my sister and my niece, and we were heading out to Edmonton to a family get-together. Chris uses this opportunity to check on the small animal shelters she strategically placed in remote rural areas between Red Deer and Edmonton. For the strays lucky enough to find them, these shelters and the food Chris provides are their only chance if they hope to survive the harsh winter conditions. It's always worked out that when I go, the dogs that need the help are the ones that come my way. On this day, Chris meets Esperanza. Esperanza is malnourished and her hind leg is badly injured. She needs medical attention immediately. But Chris soon realizes that Esperanza is not alone. Inside the animal shelter, she discovers a litter of puppies. And they were warm when I found them, and they look safe. The puppies are happy and healthy. Despite her injured leg, Esperanza has put them first, at her own expense. As Chris observes the puppies, she notices a stowaway. It seems a kitten has found his way into the shelter, too. This is Jacob. Though all the young ones appear to be in good shape now, they won't last long in these cold conditions. And I went to my vehicle, and I thought, oh, dear. Obviously, Esperanza needs to be rescued today. This is tough. This is tough for her. She was very lucky to be found when she was. You know, the plight for abandoned dogs is quite difficult. There are wolves, there are coyotes, there are other dogs. And particularly when we're leaving food out for dogs, these dogs start developing packs and start attacking each other. Chris knows that she can't leave these animals alone. They have no food, and their mother is in desperate need of medical attention. She's tied down with her puppies and with Jacob, and she's badly injured at the same time. So she's very fortunate that uh, the rescuers came along when they did and, and actually found her. Once Chris and her family have the animals loaded, she makes a quick call to Shauna Randolph at the Edmonton Humane Society. She was pretty distraught. She had found a dog that was clearly injured, perhaps by being hit by a vehicle, and at the same time was nursing five of her own puppies, and she had nowhere to take the dog for immediate medical care. Esperanza came limping in. I thought it was very dire. She must have been in considerable pain. Right from the beginning, I knew that it was badly fractured. But Esperanza isn't the only one in danger. Jacob the kitten is malnourished and in need of medical attention. This kitten truly was uh, surviving by nursing on her milk, and probably without her raising him, he would have died. Jacob comes in, starts, starts nursing. She starts licking him because that's part of the, the nursing behavior pattern. And then through that, she learns and she bonds with him, and he becomes one of her young just as all of her other puppies were one of her young. X-rays confirm Dr. Smith's theory. Esperanza's hind leg is badly fractured, and she's suffering from extensive muscle damage. The doctors insert a large pin into the bone, unsure if it will work. After two hours in surgery, Esperanza is anxious to be reunited with her family. She wanted to know the whereabouts at all times of her puppies and the kitten that came in with her, Jacob. If they were separated even into the neighboring room, she would want to immediately get back to them. I was just really impressed that despite her major injuries, she was such a good mom. All her puppies were healthy and they were cared for so well by her. It was amazing to see. I mean, she was clearly just focused on her own little family and not herself. She was just the ultimate mother. 
Esperanza and Jacob's touching story quickly spreads to the media. They showed this story with this dog, and then she was nursing a kitten. And so it just touched us, and I just thought, what kind of animal does that? She was, you know, starving herself just to keep her puppies alive. And then in all that traumatic uh, stuff going on, she takes in a kitten to feed. We wanted to make her part of our family. Her puppies were so cute, and she was just wonderful. She wagged her tail. She was just totally open to, to having attention and having someone pet her and talk to her. And then when we saw this little kitten, Oh my goodness, he was just so, so sweet. He's so tiny. And they had said, probably from nursing on a dog, you know, they just don't grow quite as fast. It was pretty special. We got to bring the puppies, Esperanza, and the cat home all the same day. Amber is able to foster the entire family while Esperanza and Jacob are recovering. Meanwhile, the Humane Society tries to locate permanent homes for these lucky survivors. We had the puppies here for three and a half weeks, and then we took them back to the Humane Society where they were all spayed and neutered, and then adopted out. As for Esperanza and Jacob, Amber and her family just couldn't let them go. They found a permanent home with the Gunderson family and continue to be an inseparable pair. I would definitely consider Esperanza to be a hero. She saved five puppies and a kitten, for sure. And then she's changed our life, and uh, we're keeping her forever. This will be a forever home for her. Recognizing a vulnerability in Jacob, Esperanza adopted him into her family. It didn't matter that she was injured and barely had enough food for her own pups, or that Jacob was a cat. And Gypsy, a mare known for being difficult, revealed her nurturing side in order to rescue an injured young horse. Both Gypsy and Esperanza were driven by their maternal instincts to reach beyond the bonds of family and help an orphan in trouble. For more information, visit cmt.ca slash pet heroes.